Hey there Dev Squad, Ryan here. In this video, we'll be finishing up our Find Servers blueprints. We'll be finishing up the logic in both the Find Servers widget and the Find Servers scroll box widget. Let's get started. So let's open up our Find Servers scroll box. And then over here on the event construct, we're going to create an event bind from the servers found event in our game instance. So let's just get game instance, cast to multiplayer game instance. Okay. And then from here, we're just going to bind and then bind event to servers found. Next, we're going to drag off of this event here. We're going to create a custom event and we're going to name this servers found. We can just drag this down into some more space down here. And next, we're going to create a new variable. So this variable is going to be called searching. And this is just going to keep a reference as to whether or not we're already searching for servers. So we're going to set this to false right here on servers found. Next, we're going to do a check to see and make sure that we have any servers found. So let's just get the length of this array. Make sure it's not equal to zero. Let's put a branch here. Then we can just hook those up. And that'll make sure that it doesn't run anything past here if no servers were found. So we can reroute this now and do a for each loop. Okay. Next, we're going to do a check to make sure that we're only using our game's servers. If you have your own Steam ID, you don't need to make this check. So let's do that by getting the extra settings right here. Okay. And from here, we're just going to make sure this contains We'll make a new string. And we need to open up our host server to check and see what the key was that we used for our game name. So let's just go over here, and looks like it's right here. So this is on the host function, and we're just going to copy this right here, and copy this. There we go. So this will make sure it's only returning servers with our game name. Now we're just going to fill out our settings. So this for each loop is grabbing each of the servers found, and it's going to create a widget and put it into the scroll box here. And then we're going to fill out all the information. That's what we're going to do next. We're just going to get owning player, get controller ID, And then we're going to get player controller. And from here, we're going to create widget. And the class is going to be our find servers button right here. We can just click on that in the content browser, press this arrow, and then hook it up right here. So next, we're going to grab this right here. We're going to get session property string. Actually, going to paste this twice because we need it twice. Make sure to hook this up over here. Okay, so the next setting that we need is the map name, and then we're going to do the server name on this next one over here. So let's get the setting name from our host server, which is just map. And it looks like server name is going to be our server name. So let's just paste that in there. Type in map. Okay, so from here, we are going to grab our return value, and then we're going to call our function in it. And then we can hook this up to all of these, and our server name is going to plug into our server name right here. Our map name is going to plug into that. And then we want to grab our current players and max players from our session property. So we can just reroute this. Drag it over here, figure out again. And then we can plug this into our session reference. 
and also drag off of here, get current players, and get max players. And we can plug those values in. There we go. Okay. And now that we have our find servers button filled with all of its settings, we just want to grab a reference to our scroll box, which we need to actually enable over here. So go into your designer, click scroll box, check is variable. And then we're going to get a reference to this now. We're going to add child. Okay. And then the content is going to be our widget. So we can just plug that in right there. That's actually all we need for this. And we can go ahead and save and compile. And we're going to move on to the next bit, which is the button for actually searching for servers. So we want to create a new custom event. Search servers. And then we're going to grab a reference to our scroll box. Clear children. And this will make sure all of our servers are up to date. And then we want to grab our variable is searching and do a branch. We don't want them to be able to search while it's already searching. And then we're going to copy our has to up here and plug this in. Next, we need to grab a reference to our player controller. We can put this here and we're going to do an is valid check to make sure that our controller is valid before trying to search. We can hook this up to our cast. And then after this, we want to call our function find servers. Plug this into the is valid. And then hook up our player controller. And we're just going to set the max results to, let's say, 50. Okay. And the last thing that we're going to do on this is just set searching to true. Okay. And then we can save and compile. And we're going to move on into our find servers UI. And actually, there's one more thing we want to do in the find servers scroll box. We don't actually have our searching text down here. So we just want to give an indication of the searching for servers to make sure that the player knows that something's happening. So we're just going to add a text down here. Let's type in text up here. We're going to drag it onto our canvas panel. And then we're just going to anchor it down to the bottom right. Set the position Y to zero. Actually, we need to set the size X to something like 150. Sorry, the size Y to something like 50. And then we're going to put the position X, I believe it is, to negative 25. Nope, not that one. So this one to negative 25. Negative 50. There we go. And that'll make sure it's just always on the bottom right there where we can see it. It needs to move a little bit away from the screen, so let's change the position X a little bit. Set this to something like 10. Maybe 15. There we go. Okay, that's perfect. And then we're just going to change the typeface to light. And then we're going to create a binding for this text right here. But for right now, we are going to type in that for the default text. Now let's create our binding. And in our binding, we're going to get our scroll box, get children count, and then we're going to check and see if it's greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, we don't want the searching text to show up at all. So we're just going to, let's see, we need to create a new return value for this. We'll create a local variable, name this return. Okay, and then we're going to set this on the true to a blank string. And then on false, we're actually going to get another branch. And then we're going to check and see if it's searching or not. Okay, 
and and go back here we can set the return text to searching if it is searching and no sessions if it is not searching okay and then we're going to plug this in right here plug this in right here make sure we type in searching dot 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 and that's all we need for this bind. And now we can move over into our find servers. So before we jump into our find servers, we need to fix an error that I made. So earlier in the series, we created this online menu. And then in the last video, we created find servers. These are actually supposed to be the same thing. So let's go ahead and jump into the online menu. Let's grab this hide function. And we're just going to cut this, go into our find servers find some blank space, and then paste it in there. And then next, we need to jump into host server and then replace the references that we had for our online menu ref. So we're going to click on our variable right here, and then we're just going to type in find servers, get an object reference, go ahead and click change variable type, and then we're going to compile so we can see all of the places that we need to replace are Looks like right here, so we can get our online menu ref, we can call our hide function. We're going to hook that up. And then inside over here, we need to just, we actually need to grab this event really quickly. Type in find servers. And then we're just going to plug this in right here. And then we can alt click that one and that should go away. Then we can save and compile. And then let's go ahead and move over into our content browser. We can now delete this. Looks like this still has references though. Couldn't. So let's just delete this. There we go. Now we can rename find servers to online menu. Now we can go ahead and open this up. Now we need to create four more custom events. We're actually going to start with our hide because there's a little bit more logic that we need to add to it. So we're going to add new input. We're going to name this hide all. We're going to put a branch over here. Look up our condition. And then we're going to get owning player. We're going to set mouse cursor. That show mouse cursor, there it is. We're going to set this to false. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to set input mode game only. Okay, so moving on, we're going to create a new custom event. We're going to name this show. And then we're going to set the visibility to visible. We're going to grab a reference to our find server scroll box. We're going to search for servers. And then we're going to grab these two right here, actually our rewrite node as well. We're going to change this to true, and then we're going to set input mode UI only. And the in widget to focus is self. And then we're going to leave the mouse lock mode as do not lock. Okay, so that's the last bit for this function. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to grab some references to our buttons. So let's find our search button right here. Let's add an event to on released. And our search is going to grab a reference to our find server scroll box up here and do the same thing. It's just going to search for servers. Now let's go find our host button. 
scroll down, same thing on released. And for host, we actually need to go back into here, find our host UI, and then we're just going to drag it onto the screen. Let's make sure it's attached to the canvas panel. Let's anchor it to the middle of the screen. And then I believe it's 500 by 300, so let's set this to negative 250. Oop, that is our button. Find our host UI. We actually need to change back that anchoring. That was the wrong thing, so go over here, host UI, anchor it to the middle. Let's change it to negative 250 by negative 150. Now let's change the size X to 500 and this to 300. Now it looks like that's not exactly going to fit. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's maybe do 750 by 500. And then we can do negative 375 by negative 250. That's good enough for now. So now we can make sure this is a variable, grab a reference, and then we're going to drag off of this, type in show, and then our matchmaking parent is just going to be self. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a close function. We actually need to add a close button because we don't have one right now. So let's just find button. And then we're going to pop this into our canvas panel. And actually we can just we can just put this into our overlay. So let's just do that. So overlay, align it to the right, and then we're going to grab a text. Throw that in there. We're going to change the text to X. And then we're going to change the color to, let's just do red. Okay. And now we have a close button. So we can just go ahead and find the event on released. And then for on released, we need to call our hide function. So we can just do that really quick. We're not going to hide all. So we don't need to worry about that. Then we can save and compile. And then... The last thing that we're going to do is we actually need to make sure that our host server is using this hide all function. We didn't have that before, so we need to make sure that's working. So we can just open this up, find the reference, which is right here, and then we're just going to check hide all, save and compile. There we go. And now we're done. All right, everyone, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you have a better understanding on how to find servers with Steam. In the next video, we'll be working on the widgets that we just created and making them look a little bit cleaner. Thanks for watching, stay awesome, and keep creating.